Well, I said 3,000 views and we'd do a part two, so here we are. <laughs> Apparently I set the bar kind of low. You guys had us there in about a day, so let's go ahead and get this thing back on the snow. Right after I shut the camera off on the first video there, the gas tank grommet decided to kind of buy the farm, so had to sort of haphazardly rip the fuel tank off and save as much as I could. And that's really the only thing that you guys missed, so let's go ahead and get this thing torn down the rest of the way so we can clean out all the crap that's still underneath the engine there. With the bars off now, we can just about take the cowling off, just have to cut the recoiler rope on the other side. But before I go ahead and do that, still have a fuel pump and a crankcase full of oil. So I wanna undo the impulse line from the fuel pump down there and just pull this thing over a bunch of times until I'm not getting any more oil out of that. I did check the mark that I put on the tank on the other side. Uh, that level's not moved, it's been a couple days. So I think it's pretty safe to say that um, all that oil draining down into the crankcase was from me having the oil pump line a bit too tight and that arm just hanging open a little bit. So I was just gravity feeding down in there. But um, let's go ahead and take that line off and take care of that. So this one's a little bit different than my 94. Uh, this one has the single fuel pump on it. And it's actually in a smart place. It's not buried underneath the engine, so if you ever need to change it, you can actually get in here and get at it without having to unbolt the whole whole engine, which is kind of nice. And there's only one impulse line on it too. The other one over here is blocked off. So I don't know if that's factory or if someone had changed this. Um, kind of looks like it's a factory setup, but uh, I know that's a common mod that people do too. Just when they change the fuel pumps, they'll move them out from underneath the engine. Um, up here on the bulkhead somewhere where they're actually accessible if you have to change them again. But, uh, let's, I guess, pull this over and see how much oil comes out of this impulse line. All right, you guys are looking like right there. Let me know if you see anything come out of that line. I'm gonna keep pulling here until nothing else comes out of that line. I'm sure it's probably gonna take a few minutes, so I'll catch back up with you guys in a little bit. Got about an ounce and a half of oil out of there. I think that's a pretty good start. Probably a little bit left in there. We can go back at that again later, but for now, I think we're gonna keep disassembling. in here undoing the electrical before we pull the engine and clearly someone's been in here before us hopefully you guys can see that i'm zoomed in as far as i can there but looks like some of these pins pulled out of the plug in the socket and instead of pushing them back in or even you know snipping the ends off and putting new connectors on there it's just strip one end wrap it around the pin that's still there and then cover the whole shit in electrical tape and that's good enough <laughs> it's like even if that was a trail fix you could come back and do it a little bit better you'd think but We'll come back in here and snip the ends off and probably put new connectors on there and then call it good. I don't think it's really worth trying to save the stock plug. Um, if those pins pulled out once, they'll probably pull out again, but, well, maybe we could try it. We'll, uh, we'll take a closer look at that after we get the engine out. dry is reusable right 
Seriously, I feel like I've had one bag of this stuff forever and I just keep using it to clean up, clean up spills and it never stops absorbing. But I probably should have been smart enough to catch that. I don't know why I didn't expect all that to come gushing out of the front of the engine, but I guess that's why I have oil dry. And now hopefully it'll leak a little bit less when we pull it up and take it over the bench. Let's go ahead and get the engine pulled. Um, I don't have a clutch alignment tool. I just never bought one. Um, I was going to for a while, but I've always read stories about how they just don't work that well and it's kind of pointless anyway. So what I typically do is I'll just take like a screwdriver or a center punch or something and just kind of scribe some lines in the aluminum um, alongside the engine mounts there. And that way I have a rough idea of how to kind of get it back in place. That, and I mean, the bolts and the washers and this, uh, uh, what do they call this, torque arm, torque resistor, something, stops the engine from shifting back towards the bulkhead under uh, acceleration. But anyway, this usually leaves a pretty solid witness mark on this plate here that you can kind of line everything back up pretty damn close to where it needs to be. And I've, I've never had any issues doing it that way, but... Um, at least not yet. If we run into issues putting this one back in, I can always pick up a uh, clutch alignment tool. But like I said, I've always heard that they just don't work that well for people and they're kind of pointless, so never got one. But anyway, let's get these bolts undone and get this thing out of here. And there we go, one suspended 583. Now, normally I would have just grabbed that and hulked it out of there, but about a year ago I herniated my L2, L3 disc, and that uh, was about six months of doing absolutely nothing but laying on the floor, so trying to avoid that again. So, smarter, not harder, right? Let's see if we can get this thing over to the bench now. All right, we're gonna let this guy sit here and drip for a little while. Let's go clean out the belly pan. Oh, and the rest of our uh, little reptilian friend down there.
Well, I think we're gonna call it there on the scrubbing for now. Is it perfect? Of course not. That's why we're looking at it from all the way back here, but this thing's a 1995. I think I can confidently say it's not been anywhere near this clean since at least 1996. And anywhere that there's a significant amount of dirt left, just because I can't fit my fat paws in there to get at it. So we'll give the outside of the belly pan here one more good scrub after we get the engine back in there. Got that a little bit dirty pulling it out. Not to mention if I spend any more time on this, I think all this snow is gonna be melted by the time I get it back together, so. <laughs> that being said, let's head over to the bench and get scrubbing on the motor itself. Right, before we get to scrubbing on this, I wanna get the rave valves pulled out. I did buy a gasket set for those. So we might as well pull those, take a look at them, clean them, I'm sure they're all both dirty as hell. And uh, I will inevitably start cursing during this process, so I will try to either cut that out or Sensor it. Do my best to keep it clean just because, I mean, I don't know, it feels like the right thing to do, I guess, but the reality is that's just not how things go out here. These are directional. They have a little drain hole at the bottom that goes down, obviously, in case you get water or something in there, and drains out then. When you pull these out, there should be a little O-ring on the back of them here. It's actually stuck on the shaft of the valve, but um, the gasket itself is also directional. The holes go in the cutout that's on the back of this housing circle, whatever you want to call it here, but um, I'll make a note of pointing that out when we put these back together. But there's also a hole right here um, in the back of the housing and that goes down as well so if you're if you're doing this watching it to figure out how to do that remember just holes go down and sometimes these will be there's your o-ring um, yeah these will be so carboned up caked up in carbon that they'll actually get stuck and not come out these actually don't look too bad they're a little bit worse than the ones that i pulled out of the other summit um, but definitely definitely not the worst that i've seen i actually expected them to be um, much worse than this, but and these are directional as well. The um, I don't know if you want to call it a chamfer on the valve itself again goes down. A lot of guys will take um, like a plastic bag and like oven cleaner and soak the valve in oven cleaner and let it sit in the plastic bag overnight to get the carbon deposits off. I've never had a set bad enough that I've had to do that. Um, I can usually just get by with carb cleaner and uh, a razor blade. I just take a razor blade and very, very carefully scrape the carbon off the edge of the valve.
for degreasing these things too. This uh, original gunk, not the foaming stuff, but the original stuff that works quite well. It's doing a pretty damn good job here. I'm not doing the best job in the world getting into every single nook and cranny, but getting the bulk of it off anyway. Okay, obviously not perfect, but a hell of a lot better than it was, and at least we can actually see uh, the marks on the oil pump in the arm here, so we can properly align that now when we put it back in the sled. And like I said, this is good enough, too, to let us know um, once we start running it a little bit if there's actually any major leaks in the gaskets anywhere. Um, I'm guessing the seals up on the front on the water pump there probably need to be replaced. I'm trying to remember... I want to say it's the seals behind the water pump there that go bad and then it starts dripping oil out the front but I can't remember if that's on the rotary engines or if that's on the series 3 engines but either way something to keep an eye on after we put this thing back in there I'm sure if it is leaking it's gonna leak pretty fast but anyway let's get back to the ray valves so with these I just kind of try to get them as clean as I can um, you don't have to be super careful with a razor blade at these either. I mean, if anybody <coughs> anybody disagrees with that, let me know, but it's not like this is some precision surface, like a gasket surface or something like that. Um, if you scratch it up a little bit, it's no big deal. Although, I still try not to. So that's looking pretty good there. Um, there might be a little bit left on there, but I mean, like I said, these really weren't even that bad to begin with. Um, definitely nothing on there that's gonna cause it to get stuck or hang up. So I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one and then I will bring you guys back in for the reinstallation. So valve goes in, chamfer down. And I usually lubricate them with WD-40 or I use PB Blaster this time, just some sort of engine friendly lubrication. And slide your o-ring down on there and then next we can install the housing and remember all the holes go down towards the bottom uh, and it is important too to make sure these ports are open on the inside and the back here um, just because that's how these things actually function right like when your engine reaches a high enough rpm your exhaust pressure gets high enough um, they inflate these boots like balloons and then that's actually what pulls your valve open and opens up your exhaust port so if those aren't open as well these aren't going to function right either so let me grab the gasket for that and remember when you put those on there the holes go towards the bottom i'm pretty sure you can install those wrong i feel like i've done it before but anyway that's the correct orientation so we'll go ahead and slap that on there and then we'll tighten those down click Click, perfect, torque to spec. Now comes the part that I hate. There we go, I think I got that one anchored in there now. And the easiest way I found to do it is to actually separate the entire thing. Um, and then I never, I never buy the new zip ties. I always just reuse the old ones because I'm just able to slip them back over. I always have been, so hopefully I can do that again this time. That should pretty much just thread back into place like that. I usually put it about finger tight because I mean it's just plastic. Like if I put a socket on that, I'd end up breaking it. So, and then I just. work the boot back around the plastic piece and again that should still move freely back and forth like that and again for those of you that don't know that's how that works when your engine gets up to a high enough rpm the exhaust pressure increases and basically inflates this boot back here and pushes the valve open increasing the size of your exhaust port and then that's adjustable via spring tension you can adjust the spring tension here and change change the rpm at which those are going to open all right, I'll go ahead and do the other side and then meet you guys back here when I'm done. All right, Facebook Marketplace engine rebuild is complete. This thing is ready to go back in the chassis. Okay. 
camera keeps shutting off on me, but anyway, we're back in, bolted down, oil and coolant lines are reconnected. All of our electricals reconnected back in here. Tried to tidy it up as best I could, but um, next I think let's go ahead and pull the fuel pump apart. We'll look at that. Hopefully not wreck the gaskets in it. I'm half tempted to just fire up the ultrasonic cleaner and put it in there, but I don't know. I think with the amount of oil that's in it, the gaskets will probably separate just fine. So let's go take a look at that. We'll get that put back in here and then maybe clean out the gas tank and try and get that back in place. She does look a hell of a lot better though. Crazy to look down in the bottom of the belly pan there and not see a giant puddle of oil staring back up at you. All right, let's rip this thing open, clean it out, dry it off. Had it in the ultrasonic cleaner for a half an hour, but uh, still want to crack her open. I mean, I'm sure it's full of water. So we'll let her dry out, and then while we're doing that, I can share the devastating news with you. I don't think this thing is going to run without ripping the engine apart. I mean, it might run, but trying to start it like this probably isn't the right thing to do. Um, when I hooked the oil lines back up, I noticed the oil level dropped by about a solid half inch, three quarters of an inch, which... I mean, I can tell now the crankcase is just absolutely full of oil again, which I, I don't think that's correct. <laughs> I don't think that's the way. I mean, I know um, they have internally oiled crank bearings on those engines, but that's just excessive. There shouldn't be, I don't think the oil level should drop by a half inch to three quarters of an inch. So I think, forget which seals they are. I don't remember. I think they're actually behind the rotary valve. But there's some seals in there that more than likely need to be replaced. Um, so, yeah, if we, like, see, this is, I think this is just going to keep happening. If we put this back together like this, I think um, this uh, fuel pump is just going to get pumped full of oil again. So we could probably get it to run by just pumping the primer. And I'm sure it would would run, and I don't think running it for a little bit, I mean, it's not like rings on a piston, you know, I don't think running it for a little bit's gonna cause those seals to come back at all. So, I think, for the hell of it, we'll probably just go ahead and try, see what happens, but my guess is the engine's gonna have to come out, we're gonna have to replace those seals. All right, so that's cleaned up pretty good, should be good enough to test it out anyway um, but yeah like I said I I don't have high hopes that this is gonna work at all <laughs> some of you are probably like stop don't even try it order the seals replace them and yep that's the correct thing to do but it's not what we're gonna do okay let's go bolt this guy back down and then I'll show you guys what I'm looking at making me think that uh, I need to replace those seals I don't know how well you guys can see that, but see how much oil is on that? And how much oil is... Yeah, look at that when it comes up out of the crankcase there. See? She is just flooded with oil. Then it all just falls back down and sits in the throat there. Now obviously there's supposed to be some, some oil down there, but that just seems like way too much. <laughs> But I feel like once I actually get fuel down to the fuel pump and a working primer, I will be able to get this thing to fire up. Um, it's probably just going to be a smoky mess. So, like I said, I think those seals um, are behind here somewhere. Those are the ones that go bad. And I think there's also a different set of seals that are on the front behind the water pump. But not 100% sure. But I guess we're going to learn, aren't we? Because we're going to have to figure out what's going on here eventually. Put the new fuel tank grommet in there. Fits pretty good, feels like. Should be putting a pickup on the end of this, but I'm not. <laughs> there we go. Nice and snug.
Well, after spending some time on a do talk forum last night and a little bit more time looking at this parts diagram here, um, what we originally thought was correct, obviously the crankcase should not be that full of oil. Um, so at that point, it's kind of just trying to determine which seal um, is the cause of the problem, which oil seal is the cause of the problem. Um, and we're really left with kind of three options. It's either going to be the inner crank seals, which supposedly never really go bad, or it's going to be one of the oil seals on this rotary valve shaft right here. So that bottom oil hose that goes into the crankcase is supposed to feed this gear here, um, kind of keep it in a constant oil bath, and that's the gear that meshes with the crank to rotate this shaft, which turns the rotary valve. Um, and there's a couple different seals on this shaft. I want to say there's like three different ones, I think, here. There's this oil seal, and then there's an oil seal, and uh, I guess I'll call it a coolant seal up on the front here for the water pump. Um, I guess if those go bad, you'll see coolant leaking out the weep hole on the bottom of the water pump, or you'll end up with milky coolant, neither of which I have right now. So I'm kind of not suspecting these, and I'm really kind of thinking it's this guy right here. Um, why I don't think it's the inner crank seals is because one, like I said, I read that those rarely ever go bad. And if one of them does go bad, it's usually just one and not both. And in that case, you'll have oil in one side of the crankcase and not the other. Um, but if this oil seal fails, I guess you'll have oil that feeds both sides of the crankcase, which is what we're seeing. So I'm really betting it's that guy right there. So in the long term, Probably shouldn't be run like this. I did read some stories where guys managed to get them fired up um, and then kind of like when you have stuck piston rings, just the actor running the engine somehow causes the, uh, the seal to start working again and sealing again um, and keeps the oil out of the crankcase. We'll try to fire this up. I don't think it's going to run, but we'll give it our best shot. Um, if it does run, like I said, it's going to run like crap and it's going to be an absolute smoky mess. Um, so I looked up the price of that seal kit for the entire engine, the seal kit gasket kit for the entire engine, it's like 50 bucks. So in the future, we will probably go ahead and try and replace that just for the sake of completion here. But right now, let's continue. We're gonna dump some gas in it and just try and see if it's gonna fire up. Like I said, I'm thinking it's not gonna. I think there's just too much oil down there in the crankcase. I think it's the seals are just too far gone. Um, I think we're just gonna end up with oil in the fuel pump. The fuel pump's not gonna work properly. And we're probably just gonna continuously oil follow the plugs, but we'll see what happens here. All right, so we got fuel down to the fuel pump. Gave the primer one pump here. I'll probably give it one more just for the hell of it. Hopefully I didn't just flood it, but let's just give her a couple rips and see what happens. Did check spark, made sure that was sparking. Even though this looks like it's a, a mess, it is electrically sound, should work. So let's just try it, I guess. That was something. Looks like I got fuel going to the carbs. Well, like I said, smoky mess. Probably should have at least hooked up the kill switch. <laughs> didn't have a way to kill it, didn't have any of the ignition stuff hooked up, except for the key, which I said, you know, was broke off, so I had to jam a screwdriver in there and turn it back. So I ended up just blocking off the throats of the carb to get it to stop. Um, not sure why it took off like that. So after firing that up one more time, kind of decided to stop messing with it. There's an obvious problem here. I think we know what it is. 
Um, so it doesn't really make sense to keep starting the engine hoping it's just going to even itself out. Um, we're pissing oil out the front of the engine here as you can see. And it looks like it's kind of an oil antifreeze mixture. I don't think it's coming out of the water pump housing. I think it's actually coming out from around the jugs. So I think we have a bad base gasket as well. At least that's my best guess. And then that would also explain why as soon as you rip on the cord, she takes off for 8,000 RPM. It's gotta be, gotta be sucking air from somewhere and I think that's the most likely place right now. I don't even have the throttle cables hooked up. The slides and the carbs are, are completely closed. And I've got the idle screws backed all the way out, but still, as soon as you rip on the cord, she just takes off. So um, if I'm thinking about that right, it's it's got to be sucking air from somewhere. There's no way that it's just drawing all that air in through the carbs and just um, burning the oil in the case. I don't I don't think that's what's going on. I, I really think there's got to be an air leak somewhere. And uh, yeah, that oil, oil coolant mixture there just makes me think it's probably the base gasket. Um, but I'm sure all the seals on that rotary valve shaft are, are also shot. So, um, bottom line is the engine needs to be pulled and resealed. But hey, at least she runs. Well, it went ahead and assembled it the rest of the way. And gotta say, she doesn't look half bad sitting here. Kind of give me the motivation to pull that engine and go through it. And I think that is the plan. I just don't know when it's gonna happen. That seal kit's like 50 bucks, so we might as well just get one and, and see what we can do. But Probably not going to happen until later this spring or in the middle of summer. Not too sure yet. Just got quite a few other things that I need to get to that I've been putting off for too long. But at this point, with the amount of time that I have sunk into it, just cleaning it up and getting it this far, probably going to hang on to it. Like I said, at the very least, I'm, I'm hanging on to it for parts for the other one. But um, at this point, I think we might as well finish it up and, and make it a usable machine. But with the way the weather's going this year, it doesn't look like we're going to have much more snowmobiling. I'm looking at grass right now. It's February 10th or 11th, and uh, it's like 45, 50 degrees, and everything's just melting. But you never know. It could get dumped on in late February, early March, but we'll just have to see what happens. This warm spell is kind of getting me excited for spring and summer, though, so it's kind of making me want to get back to working on the boat. And I just pulled home an old jet ski a week ago. I know absolutely nothing about that, so got to rip into that and see what that's going to need as well. I also have to get this thing out and go through it. It's pretty much been sitting here since I bought it back in July. I've taken it out once, but it definitely needs the carbs gone through, and it's dripping coolant down there too, so I'm not sure if that's just going to be a hose with a loose fitting or if I'm going to end up doing seals on this one as well, but we'll find out. Also got that S chassis there that needs to be gone through. I think that runs, but I'm not 100% positive. Again, just pulled that one home a couple weeks ago and don't know too much about it either. But yeah, that's that jet ski sitting there. We got to get into that yet. Got to get this outboard motor on the boat put back together. Got a different four-stroke outboard motor sitting back there that needs some love. And then of course we got the F-150 back there that still needs to be put back together as well. So no shortage of stuff to do. Almost too much stuff to do and not enough time to do it in. But if you have any other thoughts as to why this thing takes off for 8,000 RPMs as soon as you rip on the cord, let me know. I really think it's sucking air around that base gasket just based off of what I saw. But if you think I missed something, just drop a comment down there and let me know what you think. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I greatly appreciate it. We're damn near at 1,000 subscribers here, which absolutely blows my mind. So thank you to each and every one of you. And I suppose we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, have a good one, guys. Rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's hella bad After her there ain't no coming back Wanna take a run at that